Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to us playing as the United States. I'm your host, Mr. Muckle Lover, but never a dull moment in the divide. The perimeter guards around the base were given over to quite a sight this morning. The Solanter party was sent into the divide. Came out riding several of the tunnelers with crude riding gear and blinders fashioned around the tunnelers' eyes. They were lined up in formation, and with the major at the front, holding a small g gilden without group and fashion. Suffice to say, their human comrades loved the sight as did the ground commander who was not shy in seeing the praise of the Solanter. In short, the crazy little mutant's plan worked, and they even performed a mock cavalry charge. Surely they know what they were doing. The press apparently picked up on this, and the support for the Solanter cavalry corps is growing among the populace. Royal Austin has sent his bass, well, sent all of his species, bat beast tamers to the base, and they are expected to arrive by vertebrae within the hour. Sturley, where's my coffee? The eagle's nest. It's quite a surprise to find what could possibly be described as the only functional airfield in the wasteland. Granted, it wasn't much when we arrived, after asking around. Local settlers and tribes stated that the airfield was created by the survivors of the U.S. Air Force sometime after the Great War. I check if some ancient audio logs confirm just this. While the air industry isn't likely to be around anytime soon, we can't exactly pass up an opportunity to utilize a mostly functional airfield. What's more, many of the Eagle Rock's residents would be happy to assist us in our endeavors, and we can always use another airbase in our march east. In a ceremony preceded over by Air Force members and residents of Eagle Rock, who were granted special status for their assistance in upgrading the base, we have officially christened the base as Eagle Air Force Base. Between their knowledge of the land and our construction and technology, the base has rapidly become one of the largest in Utah and a center for operations moving east. Well, this is a welcome surprise. Nice. We're storing Dreamland. Hidden away deep into Nevada lies one of America's most secretive bases, the nexus of conspiracy theories and pseudoscience and whatever else commies could cock up or cook up uh, during the pre-war period. Even much of the enclave wasn't privy to what went on at the base, only the President and the Joint Chiefs aware of what went on there, sadly. The knowledge went down the rig, now we're left to pick up the remains and investigate the base like some NCR expedition, post-war. The base is a remote location of secretive nature, left to undisturbed beside the tribal raiders that are the descendants of the pre-war garrison who seemed to worship their ancestors as gods. Now that we're back in control, it's time to investigate <clears throat> the base and recover secrets in the secrets uh, of the greater Nevada test site. Of course, we can only do one thing at a time, search the labs or open the hangars. Investigate the labs, and then we have the ride of the Salanter next as well. Uh, open the hangars, investigate the labs. Well, let's go ahead and... What is this? Area 6. Area 5. I want to see the world on fire. Eh, that seems like it would help us out more. Oh. Oh, it seems, it seems like we have to do this one then. Well, we'll probably, I guess, investigate the labs. we do that one first. So, oh, that one. Deep below the base, at the center of some of the most advanced and top secret research ever conducted on the planet. This well was hidden only to the eyes of the President and the Joint Chiefs. They acquired the highest clearance in the land to even talk about. Bio-research into the blue flu, the deadly to the pre-war diseases, plasma weapons that are seemingly not of this world, and of course the secret we've been holding on to since Roswell, an actual alien body. Kept in stasis for three centuries now. The body lay at the center of a series of cloning and biological tasks, some which we sent to West Virginia. While well, the body remains in stasis, this data of course has been corrupted, and it's going to be a matter of time before we recover this. What's more, the blue flu is dangerously close to be being uh, accidentally released upon the world once again, which would have torn its way around the wasteland with no way to stop it short of FEV mutation. Good thing we arrived when we did. Yeah, good thing we did. So that's what Alien looks like. Weird weird teeth. It's become a resource in the future, for now it does nothing. Oh. Uh, right out of the Solanter. With reinforcements, the Solanter plan is simple. A dedicated thrust towards the breach side and down in the depths of the tunnelers' highs. From there, the Solanter will capture as many of the tunnelers as possible, and their beast samers will get to work breaking those monsters in. Resistance is expected, and the tunnelers, the slanters, uh, have broken in and have been armored up and given additional blinders to hide the fact that they're assaulting their own. Their noses have also been plugged to prevent them from smelling if these things give off pheromones. At dawn, slanter cavalry rode towards off towards the base as regular soldiers looked on and cheered. Vertebrate gunships covered them overhead as slanter charged Gideon out of the base. Transports carrying the beast tamers followed close behind, um, ready to deploy at the breach site. First, resistance was met halfway between... Of the gate in the breach, and the Slender's new beast of bird improved instrumental defeating their former species. Blind inside and smell, when they were attacked by their former kin, they flew into a rage, slaughtering their unarmored und undomesticated selves. The Slender riders assisted where they could and made rapid progress towards the breach, arriving uh, at the breach in a flying V formation. The Slender drove into the breach, beast timers, and an additional uh, company of Slender scouts deployed and ready to assist. However, everything rests uh, on the major and the strips, and once they're underground, we'll be unable to support. Godspeed, Slender. Cool. And of course, we're doing the sailors focus like we did at the end of the last video, but mobile logistics, nice. We'll probably do with simple tracks because we can. The elephant in the room, oh, or, or space rather. The Holy Grail of conspiracy theorists and where we got most of our advanced technology. Cooling systems, nice. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, back, at the, back at the barracks. And the Virgin North. 
Uh, so it's Frayne Barracks, a former National Guard outpost that saw rapid expansions we ramped up operations in Canada. Despite being named a barracks, the post served as a command and control center for guard units pushing against the Canadian Army, and from here, General Plemkin or conducted a strategic maneuver of using robots as shields during the Canadian only assault into the United States. The barracks had sat relatively derelict, given that most waste centers weren't aware that the post was a lot more than a barracks, and the automated defenses kept many at bay. So it does have a heater. Our song is still here. Uh, near Rapid City, Fort Meade sat on the edge of the Wilderwood post-war and was used as a secure staging post for caravans moving north. It was known as the Great Way to the Dakota since. Like a side Rapid City, it was one of the few fortified stops moving east. Thankfully, much of the base remains in good condition because of this, however. That isn't the only reason why the base was important to us. Nearly 400 years ago, in 1892, the post commander began the custom and tradition of playing the Star Spangled Banner in military events and asked for people to rise and to pay respect to it, long before it became our national anthem. Now, we have recovered an original copy of the piece and with it about a part of our history. Mostly as all of our copies went down with the rig and we were operating solely on memory. So what happened to Wilderwood? So what is the Wilderwood? We never forget our old enemy. Despite the growing threat in war with China, we never forgot our old adversary, the Soviet Union. Never trust to a communist, Ellsworth was the only base still conducting operations against our most hated foe. During the eve of the Great War, bombers took off when we saw the Soviet bombers and missiles coming at us from across the polar caps. Well, we don't know if we made it, if, it may, if, any, if any made it, but we do know that the gallant action in the face of, of certain destruction did not end in vain. For the enclave of the United States has returned, and with its, the stars and stripes fly over the bases once again. Now ready to strike a target to slowly their legacy instead of a far off dead empire. Freedom from the skies. And the Navy. The Enclave Navy is always something of a misnomer. As proud Pacific Fleet was cannibalized until only a single ship remained, much other Navy was left over manning the various defense systems aboard the rig. Time, however, has changed, and what few uh, surviving naval officers we have are doing everything possible to revamp and restore the Navy to a full fighting force. Key to this was to allow men and women to receive the same pay as the Army, but without the dangers of being strung up and crucified on a pole by the Legion. <clears throat> of course, the threat of the ghouls, whales, uh, krakens, and a casual glowing rad shark meant that there are just as many threats on the open ocean, but nothing a 57mm cannon cannot handle. Prepare to sail to places all unknown. Where we got that manpower? I'm gonna tell you. Nothing to report. I hope they're okay. It's been several days and no word from the Salander underground. Our seismic monitors are picking up activity, so we know they're alive down there. However, what's more interesting is the reaction of the rest of the country to the low mutants' actions in the divide. The Salander, while protected under treaty as equals in the United States, that doesn't mean the common citizens see them as quite equals. Many critics have questioned the purpose and effectiveness of the Salander Scout Corps, with more hardline views lamenting the arming of non human mutants. The image of the tiny Salander fighting the tunnelers violently, as well as the cavalry charge against hope, that was silenced and invigorated a wave of public support for the little creatures. Pictures of the charge are front, line pa pa front page of every paper, and the Burroughs itself is a patriotic uproar that decided their scouts to play of gallantry. Grant himself traveled to the Burroughs and met again with Earl Austin, personally thanking him for his species' contribution to the military, the nation, and the United States people as a whole, of whom they stand as equals are now more than ever. Yet, for all the, fa little for, for all the fanfare, Little word has come from the breach and is unknown if Salander is scattered and being slaughtered advancing deeper into the hive. I'm sure they're doing fine, I hope. Anti-piracy operations. As our economy grows, so too will those who wish to prey on the fruits of our labors. Even the NCR Navy struggle to maintain sea control, and our Navy will need to fill that gap to ensure our la trade lanes remain open both in the ocean and in the rivers. In the future, this will unlock decisions to fight piracy. For now, it's useful only for the decision to secure California's coast. Which will come eventually, so I'm not too upset about that. Uh, what else we got here? Anything else? Sounds conspiracy theorists. Since the rise of power, there have been some who have chosen to uh, promote conspiracies about the Enclave, spouting claim that the government uh, once tried to exterminate all wastelanders as armed raiders and uh, attempted to change the mating preferences of geckos. We should discourage such outlandish claims before they undermine the authority of the government. Fate of the Slanter. Received word from the Slanter from the base. Two messengers rose, rode up to the perimeter this morning, requesting additional reinforcement supplies and as well as radios to communicate with the surface. Um, the lead messenger, the uh, Salander Lieutenant, reported that the tunnels beneath are large and expansive, and the Salander operating unknown territory and don't know how large the tunnels are. They've established a base camp in one of the larger nests, and as well as a basic aid station, but the supplies are running short. The ground commander sent the request up the chain, supplies are on the way, additionally, an entire battalion has been dispatched from the boroughs. Uh, many of whom being veterans of scouts across the army, at the very least, we know our mutant troops are advancing underneath, which is a welcome word to what has become a national spectacle. Uh, I knew they'd be fine. I was just trying to ask people without even doing anything, so... Oh, doing alright with it. Respiratory enhancer, huh? Nice. Or in space, rather. What we know, what what we've known for centuries at this point, is that we're not alone. Ever since the crash at Roswell in uh, 1947, we've been aware. We've designed them Zetons for reasons we've uh, since forgotten. 
We know that they've been watching us, studying, abducting us. They're not friendly. They do not come in peace. And they don't want to negotiate. They even took a sitting U.S. senator and we found his dissected corpse floating in the Potomac just before the Great War. Sadly, most of our knowledge on them went down with the rig, and Callahan and the rest of the Enclave Intelligence is trying to piece together what they can. If something happens, we must be ready. It's not like we can send nuclear missiles at their homeland. There are rumors of something found out in New Mexico years ago brought here, but for the time being, we can only sit and wait. It's not very comforting. Or born in the future. Simple apparatus. Saving stranded ships from rat storms, fighting off giant monsters, attacking port towns, uh, boarding pre-war hulks full of goals and horrors, just another day in the Coast Guard. The battle rages on below. Seismic activity has slowed in the past few days. The Salander have been given status updates and saying that they've been traversing dozens of miles underneath the base, mapping out an extensive network of tunnels and nests. A uh, recent development from one of the scout teams claims that they have stumbled into a large nest, complete with one of the largest tunnelers they've ever seen. The captain in charge of the platoon was forced to retreat given the resistance in numbers, and has given a description of its size. We agree with their assessment that this thing is a queen, though we don't know if it's only one or one of many. The Major has reported that they are preparing to storm the nest along with the best beast tamers with the plan to recapture this thing alive. The operation is set to commence in the evening. Wait, how large? It is large El Grande. Nice. Uh, sure, why not? Go ahead. Sample track arenos, scrap tanks, tanks. A lost remnant returns. A garrison at Area 51 has reported the flight of a vertebrates have arrived at the base. Bearing enclave markings. After some initial confusion and shouting, we've identified them as General Adams or of the Lost Area 51 expedition. We thought them lost in the mysteries of Area 51, but no. Turns out they were unprepared to deal with a massive raider tribe that we had to deal with to secure the base. Upon seeing her capture of the base, he wasn't sure if they were enclave or not. Upon confirming that we were, he has since revealed himself and ready to rejoin our ranks. Given he's a commissioned officer, we can't deny him, plus he's bringing the remains of his expedition with them. The man is a bit of a legend in his own right, and a few requests from our own personnel have come up asking to be transferred to his command. Wow, you guys are really tall. So we only get 2,300 caps every month, that's all. It's not enough. Sample apparatus. Coastal batteries. The Coast Guard will take it upon themselves, as well as man various defensive stations of batteries that dot the coast, protecting the shores from whatever threat may come from the sea. A new dawn or the divide. This morning, our troops were greeted by the victorious Salander riding out of the base, and with almost a surprising sight, with a bugle call of revelry. Uh, the victorious troop of Salander rode out in formation, much to the cheers of the troops on the perimeter. What's more, the crazy mutants did it. Tied up between them and the three beast tamers, keeping it under control is the largest tunneler we've ever seen. They also several more of the creatures tied together in a massive herd, the Salander Major. A little worse for wear, rode up in two and saluted the ground commander and presented it to him, the tunneler queen. The ground commander's report, a joint one with the... Uh, Slander Major has called the operation a massive success, and that the base has been more or less secured. What is this? Has any country developed at least 15 developed project decisions? Oh. Extremely good work. Give a free round of the bar to the team once they're back. Nice. Anybody else want to question if the Slander was a bad idea? Restore Naval, we Naval Weapon Station at Seal Beach. Cool. Why not? Brother, restore San Diego Naval Base. Um, not so much a single installation as an entire complex of dockyards, control centers, and dry docks, and training centers that was the largest base on the West Coast. Hey, the drop. Nice. Pop bill restored. Uh, Slander Force has moved in not long after and supported by gunships in the Slander with the new tunneling mounts. Uh, the Slander Major has reported that several sweep and kill teams are still operating underneath the base looking for any remaining tunnelers that still look below. Prepar preparations to move the tunneler queen off to the burrows are being made as well as further tame the captured tunnelers with the Slander Major, opining that with the queen's breeding ability they could breed large numbers of the tunnelers for a new Slander Cavalry Corps. While unorthodox, it cannot be understood the effectiveness and speed with which the Slander operate in the region. Our recommendations for awards and honors are already being passed up command for review, despite initial resistance or <clears throat> reservations from generals and even the press for use of the Salana Corps. And the operation cannot not be understood that the fact they were instrumental in securing the base from mutant threat. Good, good. Get me Rel Austin. Or Osin. Lighthouse services. Many road lighthouses still stand and many more need rebuilt. The Coast Guard will fulfill their ancient role to keep the lights on and assist in navigation as a much changed nautical landscape. The president and their mutants. Granted paid a visit to the Divide today and per to personally thank the Salana for their actions in the Divide. The Salana troops... Stand information for the president's pass and review. While many were wounded, then their uniforms were in the best shape. All showed up to be information for the president and stood tall and proud, even if they did only come up to Granite's knee. After conducting his review, Granite gave an impassioned speech to the formation, saying how the Salanter had shown themselves as above equals to the humanoid counterparts in the military, and the contributions in these past few days will not be forgotten but remembered for years to come. Let no one else speak ill of the Salanter but Scout Corps, or that Salanter soldiers not equal to that of the human infantry. When your nation called upon you, you answered with spirit and bravery, befitting the American soldier, to face her death, only to laugh in his face. Let none forget that you met your abominable foe and not only defended it, or defeated it, but took command of it as a human would a Brahmin. 
They stand before you a man for giants with your actions keeping the finest traditions of the United States military. America will remember what the Slender Corps did here in the divide. I thank you, your nation. Thank you. May God bless America. May God bless the Slender. God bless the Slender and God bless America. Birth of the tunnels. Operations are returning to normal at the base. Seismic activity hasn't picked up anything inside the roaming patrols of the Slender deep underground. The ground operations commanders given all the all clear and non combat personnel are beginning to return. A special presidential decree granted a worthy former tunnel at Hive to be a second Salanter Burrow and has already had several families from the boroughs in Nevada had signed up to move to the Mojave. The tunnels, as they are now called, become a mix of the new Salanter City and America's first military installation given over to the Salanter Corps as well as the newly commissioned Salanter Cavalry Corps. Uh, the civilian population of the surrounding towns and settlements have returned as well, welcoming the victorious Salanter with open arms for the contributions and securing their divide. We even notice an additional caravan traffic increase from the Salanter increasing trade in the region as well. Former ground commander, now installation commander, has given the all clear and that the base is now secure. It's the American dream. Let's go. Birth of the Salander Cavalry Corps. The tactics and techniques that the Salander developed during the fight on the divide has been solidified into a new doctrine. While the Salander proven invaluable as scouts, their small size often causes them to cover less ground as humans in a vehicle or, e or even air recon. Which makes sense. Which makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, this is too. <clears throat> With the new mounts, the Salander are able to cover terrain as fast uh, as any vehicle, and they can even engage in combat against foes thanks to the ferocity of their mounts. Well, it'll take some time to get the breeding program up. The army's looking forward to deploying their new uh, cavalry across the wasteland. Modo experie at destin nos. Oh, cool. Liberty ships. Uh, let's do. Oh, we can do liberty ships. Before the Great War, the United States Navy sailed the world seas and brought the fight to China shore directly. Although it'll be a long time before we can do that again, we'll take the first step to get our men up their sea legs, as it were. Why not, you know? Continue annexing everybody around us. Nice. Because it'll lag hard, and that's okay with us. Naval reactor. Oh, yes, please. The Navy once rode the waves on a nuclear power vessel with speeds unmatched by anything the communists could throw at us. Now we shall do so once again in the re sail rings. Around the common wasteland, battle barge. Template 5, don't care about that. Washington Remnants, Infantry Template, Alaskan Regiment, Liberty Ships, very nice. Naval Reactors. That would be fantastic. Freedom at Sea. The Navy will ensure that the security and safety for all Americans at sea, tackling any threat with the same spirit and determination that saw the U.S. Navy go and challenge as the masters of the sea for over 100 years. Naval officers, American ships will be commanded by the finest captains and admirals in the 23rd century, and until the 24th will remain unchallenged as, emerald, uh, ooh, as the emerald waves dread not. Our navy sh shall fear nothing on the waterways, not pirates, legionnaires, the brotherhood, or sea monsters. Our navy will remain the uh, undisputed king of the waves and remain so forevermore. Holy crap. Uh, autopsy on the tunnelers. Given the vast amount of tunnelers we've recovered, we've been able to dissect the things and the biologists have learned. A few disturbing facts. First of all, they were at least human once. Uh, there's no signs of FAB that causes biological mutation. I mean, this was straight radiation that mutated them. Biologists are ba baffled, though, as there have been other instances of underground humans having slight mutations, but nothing this drastic. Uh, bioluminescence, scales, poison glands in their mouths, and eyes adapted to low light environments. Whatever situation happened in the Divide during the Great War managed to regress humans there beyond primate and out of the mammal kingdom and into the realm of reptiles. Fantastic. Uh, biologists are still wishing to study them more, especially as the Salander learned to breed them to continue their operations as a cavalry corps. How is it even possible? The magic of scripts. Marine gunners. The ancient tradition of the Marines manning the guns of the United States naval vessels live on, along with the providing elite members for boarding parties. Few and the proud. No longer detachments of the assisting the army or supplements for the Navy, the Marine Corps will be reborn as the greatest fighting force along the wastes. Nice. Uh, what else we got here? Naval harbors. While the answer can get away with us setting up shop at any pier, our Navy needs to have control of its bases to provide safe harbor to the fleet. Return of the fixed wings, which I read before, so if you do this again, please go ahead. I forgot about that one. I've got naval yards, too. If we're to reclaim the seas from pirates and whatever else comes up our way, the Navy needs a yard to be top of the line. We're not the wasteland shacks that pass the shipyards nowadays. I think I read this one as well, as well as New Army Procurement Command and Naval Construction Board. Furthering our in-house development program, uh, the Navy will work to ensure that the ships are built to specifications and Navy standards by their own teams of trained professionals. Bastion of the Pacific. The large naval base on the west coast, damaged by nuclear bombs in the Great War, and the base had abandoned what became as Dayglow. Still sparking automated uh, systems that kept a few prospectors at bay, as well as a plethora of feral ghouls that were former naval personnel. The answer are stored some locations for the small navy, but the underground bunkers and tunnels remained off limits. Even during uh, our restoration of the base, alarms were continuously sound as areas were opened up to a horde of feral ghouls that threatened the work that we were performing. 
Thankfully, that's all behind us now, and the U.S. Navy has proudly announced that the base is back to operational status, of course. Um, and further, we'll be acting as a temporary U.S. Naval headquarters until we can return east. Freedom ahoy! Nice. Oh, a little bit of lag is always uh, expected, of course. And what is this one? Contact lost, not good. Send a team, why not? Oh, thank goodness we found the expeditions are going to send out more power armor. Uh, what is this one? Motor pools. Well, the army wants to rely on the bird of bird and power armor. The needs of the army have grown. Our soldiers will learn basic mechanical knowledge every Monday in the motor pool. Cavalry Corps. Cavalry once rode out west and tamed the frontier. Now they shall ride out the east and tame the west. Or wastelands. Old world warfare. From any wasteland, a warfare is shooting at your enemy or whoever you're stealing. To some ball, bad or bald folks who read a philosophy book, it's a means of destroying and conquering your enemy. The enclave to America, it's the grind of their bodies beneath their tracks and crushing them with the power armored feet. Armored core of interest, too. Death before the smell, huh? To them, the old world, America's tanks were second to none, and a mass of steel behemoths rode out in the battle. The armored core developed the tactics and techniques we need so that when we had east, it would be an armored spearhead. Restoration of the Marine Corps. It's my great privilege to preside over the activation of the 1st Marine Union in over 200 years. Those were the words spoken by President Grant today at a ceremony in the Marine Corps Base 29 Palms as he presided over the activation of the first standing Marine Corps unit since the Great War. Much of the new Marine Corps are to be made up of the Marine detachments that have been serving alongside Army counterparts, as well as board, aboard naval warships in the past few months. The President spoke at length that it was his hope that these units would go on to represent America not only at the forefront of its returnees, but also abroad in, in future missions undertaken by the United States to explore the post-war world. For now, however, the Marines are, in, uh, to, are to undertake missions across the North American continent, acting as in between the rank in the file Army Infantry, a powerful power armor backbone of the mi American military. At the same time, Marines will be attached to Army units to assist in operations and stationed aboard ships to provide assistance in gunnery. Duty, honor, and supper five. Nice. Marine Corps two. Fantastic. Further story of you know, uh, Air Force Base, one of our most northern Air Force bases. Minnow Air Force Base is home to an advanced radar system that allows to keep us track of the skies in Canada. Now, uh, we'll get up there too. Is there anything else we can do? Give it a little more, a few more days, maybe first. And maybe we can annex some more people. Yeah, same careers with these guys, guys. Um, what if we just did this and just decided to just pile drive our way into there? Maybe we can do that too, yes. The Oha. 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 Dam. When those grand super dam, the Oha Dam is a relic we cannot pass up. The Dakota Dam. The Oha. Oh, Oha Dam might not be as grand as the Hoover Dam, but or as technologically as marvelous as the Hesphestus Project. Yep. Only a fool would see this old dam anything but as vital, if not more so. Whereas Hoover had infrastructure and Hesphestus had raw power, the lands around the Oha. Oha. Are as barren as they come for the wasteland. Since rust and control of the dam from the previous owners, we managed to repair much of the damage, thanks in part to our experience at Hoover. The sole swaths of the Midwest can now be powered and extending a range. Quite the defeat given our entire project started from humble beginnings of the Gecko's nuclear power plant. Power for the future. 500! Holy shnikes! Shnikes! Church of the Silo. Since being an abominably high amount of radiation around these people, we should be cautious. Four news have encountered a crazy religious cult inhabiting one of our old missile bases. Thankfully, they had no intention of launching the missiles, but instead were releasing and worshipping the radiation with them, which we, of course, raised some alarm. While they were first friendly, they eventually started shooting at us once we told them to vacate the government property they were trespassing on. Thankfully, the radiation-powered weapons were utterly useless against ghoul infantry, which we were able to rapidly, or rapidly overrun their defenses and secure the site. Their engineers are all working to get the base up and running, adding more missiles to the stockpile that we have in Hopeville. It seems that the United States is back as a superpower, even if we don't have the whole country back, of course. Great, two nuclear missile bases. The Church of the Atom won't be a future problem, right? Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do Calvary Corps next. So it seems like the amount of uh, free territories we get by integrating people, not really free, but, you know, whatever, has greatly diminished. So we're, we'll have this completely open. So we're just going to completely attack from the north. And at this point, we have pretty much claims on every tile in the entire map, I think? I could be wrong. But I don't really care. Stoon. Very nice. Another remnant. What is this? Holy Oak. Broadwater. Nice. Vehicles. So what are we doing right now? Um, carriers. Uh, Olympus Tribe. Northern Cons. And Stoon is next. So Stoon is over here. I wonder if that would open anything up. Northern Cons will be join us. but So we need to take out the Jacksons and the Glows. And these guys don't want to join us either. So we'll have to deal and work with them. But you know, it is what it is. That's fine. We'll deal with it. We always do. Good, bad, or ugly, we gotta deal with it. 
Nice, there goes middle mark. Goodbye, a middle mark. I forget who I'm just fighting against next. Who are we just fighting against? Uh, Battleford. Lightning or lighthouse service. Nice. Old world warfare, my friends. Old world warfare. Oh, why did I choose? Why did I choose wasteland cars? I want, I want this one instead. What, what? What was I thinking? I obviously was not. Oh, terrible. I know. Area 15. An EPA test site that started the effects of radiation on crops and animals before we gave it a vault tech. The data recovered here could push us to decades ahead of our current crop predictions. Natural disaster medical system. National catastrophe relief. Interesting. How far away? Ah, old world warfare, old world style. We've returned as the most powerful fighting force in North America. Um, uh, or at least, yeah, so. But before the bombs fell, America was a superpower and fielded the most powerful fighting force on the planet. Millions of men and women and thousands of armored vehicles made up the U.S. military, the mighty juggernaut it was. Post-war, however, our limited numbers meant we had to scale back operations, or find out we did warfare. Of course, those days are behind us. While we will not forget the lessons we've learned, it's time we learn the ways of the old world and bring the might of that warfare to the wasteland, and we don't mean the Legion. Nothing's going to stop us now. Oh, look at that. That can defenses. Huh. So we... Oh, God. Can we do both? Oh, my God. You can do both routes? Holy crap, that's actually really cool. It's kind of broken, not gonna lie, but whatever. Why oh, did we annex somebody? Hopefully we did. Oh, look at that. It looks even better now. Iron Confederacy. Cool. Where's the Iron Confederacy? We're also justifying on you guys. Oh, it's doing dandies. We don't need to do that. These guys may just file it. And let time go on, of course. Flying armor's nice. Flying fortresses are good. Nuclear jet bombers, yes, please. Sun so Curse of Pleasant Dale, nice. Question of Canada, we'll deal with later. Sure, with a group, sure, why not? Further store Steel Beach NSW. Or an NWS, a former ordnance sword for the Navy. Most of the base was destroyed in the Great War, but we can return to its former glory, of course. Or do we want to? That's the real question. Schooner Hotel. Armored Corps, of course, is next. Our birthday Armored Corps. What started as an EPA testing site for milk contamination following on from Operation Schooner soon expanded late to the 2060s following the realization that nuclear war was probably coming our way soon. No, oh, okay, my cook on something. Um, called the Schooner Hotel to keep prying communist eyes away. The test site housed numerous animals, plants, and food stocks to test radiation or reaction to radiation. The data achieved would prove invaluable to anyone trying to survive in a post nuclear environment. Perhaps it was a name that kept bodies like Brotherhood or the followers of the apocalypse from investigating the site. Schooner Hotel doesn't exactly invite the uh, idea of food research. Perfect. Get the research out immediately. Nice. Death Claws ate some of our team, which doesn't make any sense. I thought, you know, by this point we'd be advanced past Death Claws, eating our teams, but whatever. Uh, whatever. Yeah, there you go. Elysian Fields, huh? We're birth of the Armored Corps, Legion's Chariots, the Brotherhood's Paladins. Us? We have tanks. We're the world's largest supplanted by power armor. The invention of the fuel cell engine has allowed us to dig this ancient and deadly machine back from the grave. Aside from giving our infantry and power armor forces additional firepower, we can use them in lieu of our limited number of power armor. Fantastic. Um, of course, if you're a fool, if you go in unsupported, and apparently most of the wastelands figured out how to make anti-material rifles, our tanks will have to be supported. Both my heavy and motorized units do, do battle alongside the tanks, and light motorized units just got ahead. Most wasteland nations will struggle with this ability, but most nations aren't the enclave. Tanks and power armor? Yes, please. Mechanized logistics? That's your might see fit for a few caravans of Brahmin and then the Legion. Uh, the train of slaves, the American army, will remind them of the old world from whence it was born and bring back mechanized logistics after 300 years. Nice. Fantastic. Give 
Let me see anything. Oh, flight school. Open the door to America's newest flight school. Drive improvement. Oh, who doesn't want to fly? Red Mountain's nice. Support brigades. Okay, cool. Dedicated brigade at size elements will handle the Herculean effort to resupply the ever-growing needs of the armies as we expand outwards from Nevada into California and, of course, beyond. Where the dogs are next to. Colorado will all be under us. Implants 5, yes. And transport the core eventually. Army logistics used to be whatever we packed and anything else by the vertebrae, armed with army expansion. Such simple logistics won't cut it. The transportation core would be reestablished to deal with the growing logistic needs of the army. Yeah, they can stop the U.S. Air Force. Of course not. The Alta was always master of the sky. From very return to the shores of America, we operated vertebrates that allowed us to strike at targets with impunity and deploy strike teams at a moment's notice. Now, however, times have changed, of course. With our expanding military, the Air Force is rapidly growing out, uh, outgrowing its vertebrate fleet, and many ways our nations are starting to grasp the finer points of flight. Air Force commanders have gotten out ahead of this and begun a recruitment campaign, promising wages, technical skill training, and the chance to soar above the clouds in aircraft rather than get slugged out on the ground. They further expand the scope of their operations, taking on both the decisive and pragmatic approach to aviation. Who exactly are we bombing with vertebrates? People we don't like. You know, normal stuff. Return of the CVs. A munitions and ammo a storage site for uh, the U.S. Navy in the pre-war. Uh, much of it sadly detonated thanks to the bombs of the Great War. Living behind a ruined husk of former office buildings and ruined warehouses. However, our civilian engineers and the Navy construction battalions rolled up their uh, sleeves and restored a steel beach to its prime, almost as if the bombs never fell. Lessons learned and the techniques developed can be rapidly put towards other naval bases and dockyard construction projects, allowing us to build them in record time. Freedom Ahoy! Echoes of the Northern War, what started as an early warning detection against Soviet bombers, evolved into the main base of operations against Canadian commies during our liberation and annexation of Canada, becoming the center of a bombing campaign against Canadian partisans. However, the true treasure lay in the semi automatic ground environment or SAGE radar system, which proved vital in combating the Canadian Air Force when they resisted our liberation. For years, the base had sat silent as a cold and old robotic guards, preventing many would be scavengers from entering, thankfully. Much of the base. It remains intact as its lack of use against China saw it receive only a single nuclear bomb. What's more, the SAGE system has been fully repaired and returned to operational status for continued operations in the north. Fantastic. So we got all those ones done. All these ones done. Look, we got all those done. And then, uh, automated factories? Perhaps, maybe, yes. To cut costs and maintain standards, the Army factories will have automated labor overseen and maintained by Army officials. <coughs> Defense uh, Oversight Board. Uh, that's surprising inspections and detailed reports of factors will be reminded that they are there for the defense of the nation and not their own goals. Congressional oversight. Routine reports will be delivered to Congress and made public to the nation. Any class, anything classified will need to have the power of approval of Congress and be subjected to a yearly review. Eminent domain. In times of the war, the United States Army will be able to nationalize private factors without resistance from unpatriotic individuals more concerned about the bottom dollar than the survival of the country, of course. Cool. Give you two at a time. It's 100, 105 days. Eh, that might be a bit much, actually. Oh, well. That was fast. War in Air Force Base with one of our strategic missile bases, however. The cells remain empty given they were all fired during the empty Great War. I don't confess to Pleasant Dale. Dunder, nice. With the doggos go bye bye.
Another remnant. Wolverines, when we heard of the lands of the Du Shu Lu and Hexi Lu, we expected that they were Chinese escapees from Boulder Prison, or maybe some from other internment camp elsewhere that we didn't really care for after the Great War. Kind of like the Shi, but homegrown. Well, it turns out they were more of the Shi than we realized, as both nations were actually remnants of a Chinese special operations force deployed on the onset of the Great War to wreak havoc in America. The subsequent destruction of the world by nuclear bombs meant their mission ended before it could start, and they had no contact with the communists in China, of course. That didn't stop them from being ghoulified, trying and failing to recreate what they considered true com communism on American soil. I guess a series of disagreements over the past hundred years or so meant that they weren't all too successful, having been pushed around by the Iron Lords, the uh, Hand Dogs, and anyone else who decided to pick a fight. Well, what do you know? Even communism doesn't work. But guess what American democracy does? Common goals will steal our rockets. Why do my office kill them? You know I'm doing this, but I'm not going to really use it. Ground pounders, good. Power armor forges. The very backbone of our army, we shall produce the finest power armor in the waste, ensuring that each one is an army of one all on its own. Lessons from combat. Battlefield reports, after action assessments, and damage inspections will allow us to better focus on the weak points of our power armor and make recommendations accordingly. A thunder over the Pacific. The discovery of China's ghouls has brought forth talk that maybe quite possibly China survived as well. The mere existence of the Enclave gives credence to that thought, and our knowledge of the Dark Secret's past meant that quite possibly they'll be less good than good at detentions. We hope to play uh, them off until word returned from one of our trade ships docked in Hawaii. In the harbor, we have docked a large sailboat. It was flying the flag of China. Nothing between happened between the two. With well, the captain reports of a stairs between their sailors and ours, of course, being our trade ship, flew the flag of the re reunited states. The ships were soon underway without incident, but word got out and spreading like wildfire, of course. Many raised a petition or even funds for an expedition across the Pacific to see if maybe, just maybe, China survived. Instead of issues with such an expedition are being addressed, but the most pressing issues that most of us don't exactly know Chinese. Thank God for the sheep. Should we begin bring Rob go translate? We got other issues we're about to come back later. Oh boy. That's not good. Still a full week left, huh? Oh, what's we got? Defense Institute Technology. From the Midwest is Simpax, or microwave to Simpax. The various technologies we develop for the national defense can move to the civilian market, and the new Defense Institute technology will work with the civilian organizations to better accommodate this transfer from, from tactical to practical. The power of the war. Not to so, no, not the super mutant hovel in Oregon, less of an Air Force base, more of a missile base for international ballistic missiles. Sadly, nearly all of them were fired in the Great War, leaving empty silos in a dead end and decaying base instead. Regardless, the base is of vital importance to us, not least of which is the base contains the schematics and blueprints to still maintain nuclear weapons. While the components to make the warheads are missing, a large missile packed with conventional explosives slamming into our troops, or a city for that matter, is still a vital concern to our nation, of course. Now, the base has been rapidly secured, and uh, the Air Force is setting aside the infrastructure to eventually return the cells to working order, or with or without nuclear missiles. One step closer to retaining our glory. Cool. You're saying we can't do any other land auctions at the same time? And triple it, almost? Triple everything that we have? Okay, I'm it's nice. I guess we can't go back to War 2, huh? And there they go. Beautiful.
nice, 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 nice naval stuff, yes. Operations Command. With the base restored and under our control, we can return the base to operations. And America will become a full nuclear power once more. Sierra, Fort Sierra Forge. Fort Sierra delivers again with this vast underground facility converted from bio storage to weapons production. It will make Fort Sierra the largest weapons production plant in the, in the wasteland. Increased monkeys. Specialists who are trained with the repairing power armor. And further, uh, encouraged to create innovation on the battlefield to further enhance the troops in the field. Add Grease Monkeys to maintenance companies, increasing the reliability factor by 10%. The expedition, of course, begins. That's a bad idea. What is this? Should we? Yep. Oh, God. Cybernetic warfare. Very, very bad. Well, let's wait to do that one, maybe. We'll wait to the very end, once everyone else is dead. Um, they're out to Hawaii. Well, it's calm without incident. Only a few sightings of ghoul whales and krakens keep gun crews alert and responsive. Uh, near the island, tower radar picked up several large unidentified ships moving at high speed. Or too high for the vessels of the Kingdom of Hawaii. Our captain. I reported seeing several of ships flying the Chinese flag, and are closing in. They don't appear to be an intercept course, however, our, uh, the image our captain sent us indicate they are not civilian vessels. Oh boy. Uh, implants, better implants. Keep me busted. The Xi representatives on board have begun flashing several signals from the ancient code book from the Xi Huang Ti. Flashpoint. Volunteer army... Honestly, volunteer army's fine. I like weekly stability, but still. Flashpoint. The captain has reported she's circled the watch for several days, as the Chinese fleet has as well. She had been speaking through broadcast uh, radios, though though 200 years of living in an American city means the dialect of the Xi are far different from than the Chinese. They resorted for the time being transmitting images, one of them being a curious flag that looks like the Chinese flag from pre-war, but it clearly isn't. They even seem just on edge as we are, and the leaders of our expedition are split with something and they are wary of our presence. Others think they are hiding something. At a standstill, the expedition has called for instructions with the Xi standing by. Ni hao. Peace, peace can change. They are trespassing in American waters. Peace, peace can change. There's a moment of static until the reply came in accent English. Oh, you survived too? Wonderful. Greetings from the Democratic People's Empire of China. There's an awkward pause, and the two ships agreed to come alongside. First thing our crews noted was that we, uh, <clears throat> thought was the pre war Chinese flag was actually one of the same colors. But that didn't really end the awkward look and greetings when the two sides gave, but soon they warmed up to each other. The real breakthrough comes when our crew learned that they were preparing to fire all weapons, but decided against it on account of Americans showing no hostilities. The expeditions continued swapping at tea and Nuka Cola on this night. Discussion continued for the next day, and we've learned that China had vaults of its own. We've also seen strange lights in the sky, and today too have a death cloud problem. Sadly, they report that most of the U.S. forces in China were killed by our own nuclear weapons when the war began. As the ships were preparing to depart, the captain relayed us a message from the Emperor's household. Bring an offer of commerce and peace with China that the Emperor wants to meet with the President of the United States. Seems like war never changes, but peace must just might. Well, by all tea in China. Can't be trusted to prepare for war. Early warning systems. With the centralized command and control, we need to be ready for whatever the wasteland throws at us in the future. Naval harbors. Well, the answer could get away with setting up a shop at any pier. Our Navy needs to be have control over space and provide safe harbor to the fleet. Nuclear defense operations online. With a tunneler threat over. Ashton Air Force Base and Hopewell have been restored to full working order and are ready to begin operations. We've already identified several nuclear sites across the North American wasteland, though getting into them will be very difficult, of course. Several areas are guarded by automated sentries. That we cannot guarantee will answer to our codes, while others are either used as places of worship or are incredibly irradiated since the Great War. It would likely be best if we secure these areas with the conventional forces first before moving in with dedicated teams to secure them. It's doubtful anyone knows how to operate the complex computers needed to launch them, let alone rely on their targeting systems. For now, America can rest easy knowing the military is kept vigilant for watch for any nuclear threat. Goodbye. I'll play frigates, battleships, yes. And completely demolishing them. Love it. Congress of Peoples. Iron Confederacy Dundurn. Pleasantdale. Iron Confederacy, so. Old Believe It or Maybe Next. Ah, that's a good question. Cool. Let's make a group up for so these guys will all die at the same time. Fantastic. Look at all that. Yup. Um, we're gonna have you guys go on from this side here. Go to. Is that it? Really? Huh. Alright, whatever.
I'm getting an airbase here too. Might as well, right? Giants. The Navy expected nothing, expended nothing in escorting the President to Hawaii, where the meeting was agreed to take place. The largest and most decorated ships of the fleet, the President rode in his ease, in ease and comfort abroad, aboard, further guarded by the Secret Service, Marines, and Army Rangers. Upon arrival of the Marine One, uh, uh, Douglas Grant, Alberta Bird, was met with a fanfare by King Kamehameha the 21st, who likewise was honored to meet the President of the United States. Within hours of arriving, the Chinese fleet was sighted. While most of the ships were not as impressive as their American counterparts, save for one, the centerpiece ship, a massive aircraft carrier. King Kamehameha, the 21st, noted to the president that the Emperor's personal ship, indicating the Emperor had, seen, had been to Hawaii before. As they docked in Pearl Harbor, Americans lined up to meet the Chinese who disembarked drums, beating as a procession led up to a single floating platform that held what could be only seen by the Chinese Emperor. As the floating chair came off down, it halted before the president and the Hawaiian king. Stepping off, Douglas Grant was amazed to see the ghoul standing several inches shorter and heavy, uh, heavily accent English the ghoul spook. Greetings, I'm the Emperor Huang Di of the Democratic People's Empire of China. On behalf of the reunited States of America, it's an honor. Fate of the Dragon. Outside customary greetings and various photo ops for both the American and Chinese press, the two sat down for a luau hosted by King Kamahamaha the 21st. Douglas Grant and uh, Huang Di spent much of the time speaking of the history of the two countries. While Douglas Grant was sure to avoid some of the darker secrets, Wang Di seemed enthralled by the story of how America reunited under the Stars and Stripes and seemed intrigued by the concept of super mutants. Conversely, uh, <clears throat> the People's Republic never recovered. Their own vault programs were meant to provide for the war effort rather than allow for survival of the nuclear holocaust. Moreover, however, the CCP Master Vault was destroyed by the marauding U.S. military remnants, and thus the vaults were left to rot themselves. And for the 150 years, there were separate kingdoms under their, their own rule. It wasn't until 2243 that an effort by the led, or Led by the greatest vault attempted to reunite China to restore to its former glory. Marrying new and old, the Democratic People's Empire of China was born from the ashes of the old world to something more, suffice to say. When stray ships reported seeing vessels flying in the stars and stripes, he was quite worried about opening old wounds that could see the world destroying again. Upon receiving peaceful overtures, however, he is glad America has come, has come into the new world, a better country, and not a land of genocidal maniacs who stuck in the past, locking into their old views of the old world. America has learned from the war, so help me if anyone mentions the Enclave. The end of the war. As stories and meals come to an end, the main event comes upon everyone. Well, the Great War was an epoch event that saw the deaths of civilians, the destruction of cultures, and the unmitigated eradication of nearly every species, the end seemed so trivial. A simple paper with simple text stating that the United States and China ceased hostilities, wishing to begin a new era of peace. The events were too far in the past to assign blame, and at this point, what does it even matter? As the Emperor prepares his own pen, Douglas Grant looks down at the paper and reflects on the events that have happened in the events to come. God bless America, and no one else. Douglas Grant shoots the president. Or not. Did you really? The Great War, the Great Mistake is over. Of course, this still needs to be ratified by Congress. With the stroke of a pen, the Chinese Emperor and the American President ended a century of conflict and 200 years of destruction and rot. Cheers went up among the Americans, Chinese, and the Hawaiian members of the crowd, though to some, the moments seemed bittersweet. While hostilities are over, uh, it seems almost pointless in the modern day. If the Mongol raider, plague wastes of the Gobi, or the super cannibal force of Oregon, the idea of peace seems superfluous. The Great War lasted just two hours, obliterated the earth, and neither China nor the United States have been at war with each other since. Yet, even as the President and Emperor shake hands for camera, like one cannot feel but, feel but hope. Hope for a return to civilization, a return to stability, and the two greatest powers in the old world could just maybe make something anew. Who knows? We won't know unless we try. Peace in our time. Main Street USA in China? So, as the festivities continue, the question again came about the American forces in China. After some talks, it became clear that most of the armed forces devolved into raiders that died off over the years or perished in a desperate attempt to return home. All is in integrated with the Chinese or the Chinese counterparts over the centuries, however. The center of all American activity in China, Shanghai, maintained a sensible American presence and culture not too unlike San Francisco. Over the years, it has since built mirror images of the United States, representing these pre-war ideals, uh, all while melding with the Chinese culture. Already, many Americans are eager to just visit the city, and many from the Chinese delegation are just as eager to see San Francisco. Interesting. Of course, united we stand. Maybe we're just again, please go right ahead. Uh, anything else here? Enclave propaganda, of course, we need more in-depth solutions, but adding in alternative facts about history and the, what the Enclave was about will go a long way in not having everyone try and kill us. So, but, unfortunately, I think I might just have to end it there. I th Hello, Northern Light Republic? Oh, well, we're going to go to war with you anyways. In the next episode, we'll finish these guys off, integrate everyone here, and probably, probably, not guarantee, but probably, probably,
call it a campaign. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, go leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And if you, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll finish out the campaign probably. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.